tour in English. It's the first time this is offered in English. And uh, in the context of the festival, um, I am, uh, ever since I've been in Vancouver, I've been involved in the Heritage Community. I'm a founding councillor of Heritage Vancouver. And I am a guy from the Vancouver Heritage Foundation. <coughs> and also, uh, I'm a founding, uh, a founding uh, councillor and the current president of the Société Historique Anthophone de la Colombie Britannique. Right? And our mandate is actually to bring to life the Francophone history of our province, which is very significant. Um, most people don't know that several towns and cities and villages in, the, in BC were created by Francophones, including Kelowna, Mission, Canal, Victoria. Victoria. Victoria was very, very French. And I just attended a, a 170th anniversary of Port Victoria a conference last uh, weekend in Victoria. It was a two weekends ago, and it finally came to the forefront. Uh, in that, 90% uh, of the people who were working there were francophones, and the language of trade was French and Chinook. So, um, what we're going to do is obviously, we're in the earliest parts of Vancouver. We're going to be going through parts of Gastown and through parts of what we now know as the downtown east side, which was downtown Vancouver, of course, right? So, uh, and we're going to stop, we're, we're, we're jumping back and forth through the decades because otherwise we'd be walking through the same places. But we're going to, I'm, I'm going to share some stories with you about some key francophones that were here as pioneers or as key members of the community. And here we are in Victory Square, and this area, this corner here, was a key building in the city. It was the city's first general hospital right there that crappy two-story parking lot right there and i'm going to pass it around because this is the gentleman we're talking about his name is dr Henri Evariste uh, Langis Nevro uh, Langis what a fabulous name dr Langis so he really became quite to light um, you, you probably know that in 1886 Vancouver became a city. Six weeks later it burned to the ground, right? And in the fire they found uh, the remains of about 22 people, right? And they also found a skeleton that was really had, seemed to have had a lot of operations because it was full of metal, etc., etc. And they put it in the, the, make -up, the makeshift morgue. And Dr. Nagis went and got it, and he said, no, no, that's the skeleton I had in my office. Uh, and they said, well, but it's a human skeleton. And he says, yes, I just went to Dead Man's Island, and I dug it up. And that's because Dead Man's Island was the first oh, really cemetery of Vancouver, right? And that's basically what you just did. You just went and dug up a cadaver, right? So he made the news that way. But also, um, he came from a village called Beek in, in Quebec. And uh, first he established himself at Port Moody. Um, he became one of the first doctors of Vancouver, including the first hospital in Vancouver, which was the CPR hospital, this tiny little shack right by the railroad. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so he worked with these workers, and uh, those who had been uh, in the CPR hospital served the CPR workers, right? Who had many of which were had been wounded in their work, and. Uh, there wasn't much safety going on, right? And who were uh, a good 75% of the workers? Chinese men, we all know that. And they were the ones that sustained the most injuries. And he was the one, Dr. Uh, uh, Langis, he was the one, this lady hasn't seen the pictures here, um, he was the one who actually realized one day there was a, a man there who had a badly broken leg. There was absolutely no way that was going to mend because for the Chinese they gave them food very little medicine and they knew they were replaceable and the next day he was gone and the other Chinese workers said oh they sent him back home well no the thing is he found out that the CPR was giving them uh, lethal dosages of morphine oh doses God. of morphine knowingly or unknowingly? yeah knowingly okay. uh, so it was medicine but basically it freed up and he's the one who brought this forward even though it was never really proven but he basically came to that realization. So, and he's the one being a good man, and he was an exceptionally good man. He uh, he treated a lot of different uh, patients, uh, many without asking for payment because he knew they couldn't afford it. Um, 
This is the man we're talking about here. And what's his name again? Right Dr. Langis. Langis. Henri Evariste Levrault Langis. All right. And L A N G I S. Oh, just one S. Langis. Uh, he's pronounced Langis. Langis. Yeah. Um, okay. And during the uh, in 1893, we had a big smallpox epidemic here. What, uh, when was that? 1893. Thank you. And so he set up shop in a floating um, uh, on a barge off down Victoria Street in what is now the East Side, right? And there was a tent there, and that was where he treated smallpox victims. Um. The hospitals didn't want the smallpox victims because it was highly yes, contagious, of course. And is that how the uh, Aboriginal people caught it at, at that outbreak? Oh no, no, they were. That was long gone. That was 18, uh, so this is a 60s, 60s. Oh, this is long gone. Yeah. Um, he finally moved to Parksville, but he uh, he died in Vancouver in 1937, and he's buried in Burnaby. Um, and it is said of him that he would have been a rich man had he uh, collected. Uh, asked to collect the fees of all from all the patients that uh, that he did help out. So that's our first one, and I just can't believe this is the kind of buildings that we've lost. That used to be standing right there, the first general hospital of Vancouver. All right, we're just going to walk up a block over here.